If you'd like to edit videos on a Chromebook, it can be really difficult to decide how to go about it. There are several different options, but which will suit you best? In this video, I'm putting some of the most popular video editors to the test. I'm gonna have just 30 minutes to edit the same video in each piece of software. And then at the end, I'll judge the editors on how slow or fast they were to use, uh, how friendly and enjoyable the experience of using them was, and how well the exported video turned out. I'm gonna be using the Asus C434 Chromebook, which is pretty middle of the road. It's got an Intel fanless CPU from a few years back. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, and honestly, your smartphone might almost be more powerful. I'm gonna be trying two different Android apps, KineMaster and CapCut. I would have loved to try PowerDirector, but it's not compatible with this device that I'm using. Uh, then I'll do a couple of web apps. I'll use WeVideo and ClipChamp and then some Linux apps. I was gonna use OpenShot, but it kept crashing whenever I dragged any footage onto the timeline. We've crashed, so I'm just gonna eliminate it from the contest straight off. So instead I've gone with Shotcut and Caden Live. So what's the video that I'm going to be editing? I'm glad you asked. It's your basic little vlog. I've got a clip here where a fellow walks in, sits down, I wanna crop in uh, to a tighter shot there. He says, I have something very important to tell you. I'm actually a penguin and I look like this. At which point I've got a transparent PNG of a penguin to overlay on top of it. I want some text here too saying, penguin man revealed or something like that. Then we'll put this police siren sound effect crop back out, he looks around, opens up the Chromebook, we'll chuck this police footage on the screen there. He says, oh no, I've been discovered. I'd, I'd like to kind of make that line uh, distorted, like a nice echo sound effect would be really good. Then I want a fun, groovy transition to the next clip, which should be in black and white, where the fellow's now in a jail cell. Unfortunately, the idiot who shot this put the bars behind the guy, so I've got another PNG of jail bars to whack on top. We'll record a quick voiceover line, to end it and lastly there's a piano track here to put underneath the whole thing simple easy there are time codes below for this video that you can follow along uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you a montage of my editing experiences then I'm going to show you the final exports and finally I'll talk about the results and come to some kind of conclusions I'm going to start with KineMaster here we go one of the best video editors and that's on Android. Let's put in the big clip and oh, it's touch screen, isn't it? Is how you're supposed to use this. I think I can just drag like this. Nice. Our preview has stopped working. There we go. Nope, oh, it doesn't like this clip anymore. It keeps stuffing up on the display on this clip though. Seems fine when I go to another clip though. Cut to the right of playhead for touch screen controls. These are pretty intuitive. Now, question is, how do I get to a different layer here? How do I make another layer? Or oh, put this on another layer? This is where things start to get a bit confusing in this. Duplicate as layer. What if I do that? Okay. Okay, that does something. I just don't know how to move it to the left. Okay, that's our audio, nice. So we've got this walk in and then we just want... Artifacting is interesting, but I assume it's just on the preview. Then we want to crop this one in. How to do that? There's a fair few settings here, which is nice. What does that do? Oh yeah, you can do a, a zoom, a bit of a... Oh yeah, you can just do it on the screen, that's nice. Well, okay, what I did there was a bit weird though. That's, can we undo that please? Oh dear, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, what am I doing now? Did it crash? What's going on? Sometimes things just seem unresponsive until I find the perfect little tick mark. And I just move in to like this. Ooh, purple man. Again, how do I move these clips? I'm trying pressing on it and then trying to drag, but nothing's happening. I can trim it. How do I move it? I'm trying all manner of tapping on it. Maybe this is a bug, I don't know. That's weird. So you can kind of use the mouse in here, but it's probably better in the touch screen. We need our penguin image add layer with media. Yes. Penguin. Yep. That's good. That's looking good. That happened quite easily. Why can't we move clips around? 
I'm gonna try restarting the program just in case I'm missing something stupid. Uh, saves automatically, which is nice. You don't have to control less or anything. There's an ad for TikTok. Never heard of it. It's gotta be a bug. This is quite easy and nice. Just placing it in roughly the right spot. Can even give it a slight rotation. Actually, a slight rotation's hard. I won't bother. We want a fancy transition here. Ooh, travel and activity. Travel? What does that look like? <laughs> Taking a plane ride to jail. Um, we've got stuff like sentimental, serene. What does that do? Oh, that's pretty cool. Fun transitions. Many circles. Ooh, I think we've got to go with the plain one. Again, these sound effects are not in the perfect position, but I just can't move them right now. We need to do our voiceover, so let's see. Can we add a freeze frame is a good question. We can just turn the speed right down, I suppose. I can't see another simple freeze, so I'm just going to go speed down to like very low. This is what will happen to you if you let the world know what you really are. It's not in the perfect spot. But again, I can't move it. Voice changer, cool. Layer of text. Enter text, okay. Penguin man dis revealed. And we got some fonts. Not a lot of fonts, but what you need, I suppose. Oh yeah, you've got a few text options here. We can give it a shadow. We've only got five minutes, better export. Um, how do we export? Uh, that little button up there, must be. Okay, full HD 30. Let's turn up that bit rate and go wild. Okay, try to sell me premium to remove watermark and ads, fair enough. Skip. Exporting, okay, now is when the Chromebook really starts to heat up. Fingers crossed this export is a success. Using KineMaster has been a pretty good experience actually. Uh, considering it's all, you know, touch screen controls and things, it's fairly intuitive. And I didn't get too frustrated. Dragging clips was not working. That is surely just a bug. It has worked for me in the past. You just hold on a clip and move it. No crashes. No major concerns. That was a pretty good experience. The end product is hindered by um, time limit with only a couple minutes left and by not not being able to drag the clips just a bug has it crashed or is this an ad it's trying to show me an ad isn't it there it is untitled share that's nice we can share straight to drive save to files and that is dead on just under 30 minutes spent in KineMaster good stuff Okay, let's import our footage. Okay, this is all looking quite good. Quite KineMaster-like. It's got Stabilize, which is always lovely to see. Beauty? Let's see what Beauty does. Do I turn up the Beauty? Turning up the Beauty. Beauty is at 100%. Not sure what's going on there. Up the contrast, up the saturation. Um, what's this? Is this an ad? No, it crashed. My project seems to have crashed or something. But the whole program didn't crash, just the project, which I admire. This is all making quite a bit of sense. All the necessary buttons seem to just be along the, bu the bottom, so I'm making these cuts in pretty good time. So we want this bit to be zoomed in. Oh. Well, that was very easy. That was like two swipes of my fingers and we're done. Penguin, penguin, add. Yes. Add. Okay. This was very smooth, just like KineMaster. They're both good at... Okay, it's crashed again. So it does these little crashes. Penguin. Compress videos. Ooh. HD videos may be slow to edit in preview mode. Would you like to compress all videos to improve resolution? I'm going to try that. I'm going to compress it. That's a great suggestion. It's basically making proxies for me. So I wonder if things will be smoother from here on out. Got some cool styles. Oh yeah, and look at this. I like 
how easy it is to adjust. I can give it an animation real quick here. I'm sure Kinemaster could have done this, but it didn't pop out to me, you know? Bounce it in. Nice, Penguin Man revealed. Long press to drag and change position. See, long press, drag and change position. See, this is what Kinemaster wasn't doing, but it's working fine here. I don't know how to crop the penguin overlay. What's this, crash or an ad? Crash. Actually, I don't think I've seen many ads in here, just crashes. What's worse? So I can see my clip there. Yes, and then I can adjust it here. Zoom in a bit. It's struggling to display it in real time, but this is me just resizing that vidya. It requires a bit of a two finger pinch. But there, I can get it there, and then if I just move the timeline, it'll catch up. Little crash. That keeps happening. It's doing actually totally fine apart from the crashes. Sounds? No, I don't want your sounds, I want my sounds. They're just suggesting some of their sounds, which is nice and all, but I want to... You've got a siren? Okay, I'll use yours then. Your sounds. Ah! From device. Found it. It was just slightly hidden. Now I've got both. So let's end the project. I think that's about the... Seventh crash. Voice effects, very good. I guess we'll just go with deep because I can't see an echo effect. Add a freeze. Oh, that was easy. That was easier than Premiere Pro. We've got a freeze of whatever length we like so we can add the voiceover. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. Okay. Apart from crashing once a minute, this app's really good. But I gotta, I just gotta give respect too for the fact that it's not actually crashing the entire app. It's only crashing the project, which is vastly superior. Crashing the computer, terrible. Crashing the whole app, pretty bad. Crashing just the project, I'll get over it. Lots of different transitions here. You wanna show me what it looks like? There we go. Whoa, it's pretty fancy. These camera effects, these are some fancy transitions. I might go with one of these spinning ones. Whoa! Okay, these are cool transitions. Delete. Okay. Oh, crash again? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. We're having a good joke. The only problem I'm having now is just going through checking everything because it's um, crashing a bit much for me to just preview it. And let's export. Resolution 1080p, please. 30 frames per second. I don't seem to have a, a bitrate option. That's fine. Video being exported. Okay, now please don't crash, hey. Oh no! We crashed. I'm gonna have to try exporting at 720p for this one. Come on, CapCut, I'm on your side. Come on, 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 this one probably has a slight advantage because it's the one I've used the most and also it's just got a really classical interface as well. Okay, we'll import our media. Bam, it's all there. And what's lovely about Wii Video is that it's uploading um, at the moment to their cloud, but I can start editing before it's even uploaded. And I'll just use the local clips. Genius. Ah, oh, this is gonna be easy, look. This, using the mouse stuff. Cinch. I do wish there were a few more keyboard shortcuts. Oh, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> For say, zooming in and such, but that's just me being picky. It's being a bit slow to preview at the moment. I assume that'll speed up once the clips are uploaded. Choppity chop. Um, edit. Oh yeah, scale. There we go, and I get to scale it just like so. So yeah, some features here are behind the paywall. Don't have access to that. The easiest part in every application so far has been adding this penguin. I can't easily see a freeze frame feature, so I'm just gonna maybe slow it down, slow down this clip. That's behind a paywall, so so I'll just let that clip play out since I don't have freeze frame, I don't have um, speed modulation. Let's do this voiceover. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. And do that again. We need another track. That's easy enough as adding new audio track. Gotta say so far this is the least laggy, least crashes, least hiccups. 
it's just kind of working. Check this out. We got keyframes. I love me some keyframes. All that I'm not finding at the moment is kind of sound effects, sound distortions. I wonder if that's a paid only feature. I'm just gonna have to have no effect there, I think. Playback is just smoother than the Android apps and I can more easily move a whole bunch of clips at the same time. I can grab all of these, drag them. Okay, let's see what kind of transition we can stick in here. Cross zoom is cool. Uh, we've got like a rainbow effect. We've got like a cube, cross hatch. These are not bad. All right, we want something fun and fancy, so I'm going with the ornamental form. Okay, I just put it in the wrong spot. Control Z, love it. You have to see me just get up and walk away because I can't find a freeze, freeze frame thing. But that's okay. Motion titles are behind the paywall. Plenty of layers available in Wii Video. Love that. It's more easy to line things up too because um, there's kind of sticky clips. What do you call it? Snapping. Things snap into place. Penguin Man revealed. Decent number of font options here. Let's go finish. So I can only export in standard definition. 480p, no HD unless I paid for an account. And it's nice how you can export to whatever location straight to YouTube. And then it's nice that the export is cloud-based, so I don't have to worry about this little machine overheating or crashing or anything. It's gonna happen out there. I could even go to a different computer, a phone, and get the finished export there. So I'm finishing with about 10 minutes to spare with Wii Video. Granted, there were a couple of things that I couldn't do because the features were either behind a paywall or I couldn't find the freeze frame feature. And the export could take longer than the Android apps because it's up there queued in the cloud, but that's fine because it's nice because I can just close it, walk away. It'll email me when it's done. Okay, Clipchamp. Let's see what it's got. I've never used this one before. It's another web app like Wii Video apparently. Okay, uh, nice to see cinematic size video. 21 by 9. I'm going 16 by 9. Um, drag and drop browse. You can import from Google Drive and such, which is lovely to see. This might take a while, you say. Oh, they've loaded very quickly actually. Like quicker than an upload would be, so maybe they're not fully uploaded. It's feeling a little laggy, but I don't know if that's just me. Split. Backspace works, lovely. Let's black and white this. We've got filters. I assume there'll be a black and white filter. Yes, indeed, there are two of them. Um, let's get my penguin on. Click and resize to move. Oh, we just jumped straight into it. I like that. I gotta be honest, the UI is like slightly glitchy and stuff, but everything's working perfectly. Can I add a layer that's a penguin? Yes, I can. Okay, I feel like I wanna zoom into my timeline. How do I do that? Zoom in. Good, 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 good. Ooh, some fancy text here. Let's do this glowy one. Great number of fonts. I'm liking the style. Can I not just grab this and move it around? No, it doesn't seem like I can just drag the text around, which is unfortunate. I have to place it in one of these positions. Oh, suits me now. Good, we've got snapping, so it easily lines up there. The UI just on this fairly small 14 inch screen is feeling slightly claustrophobic. It did in Wii Video as well, but Maybe even more so here, I'm not sure. It could be just because I'm not used to it. Everything's laid out great though. Let's see if I can add an effect to the discovered. We are lagging a little bit. Um, speed I can adjust. Okay, I'm again not seeing any audio kind of effects. Whereas Kinemaster had a bunch of like EQ and stuff. I'm not seeing anything like that on these web apps. So I'll just have to skip that again. Okay, we're bugging out slightly. Don't bug out. And we're getting some funny lag. What if I just, can I control Z my way out of here? Yeah, we're back. We're back to where I was. It's, I like the way it's designed and laid, laid, laid out, but it's not running quite as smooth as Wii Video, I must say. It seems slightly more demanding on the um, PC. Now, can I add a freeze frame or anything? I haven't seen that feature. I'll make it very slow at the end basically a freeze frame. Split, delete. I should make this police siren end at some point. I'm not seeing keyframes, but I can make you fade out quite easily. Let's see if we can record our voiceover. 
install Clipchamp for a better experience. Installing it as a web app. I wonder how much of a better experience that actually is. Um, what does that mean? Cloud Sync. Your files are not synced to the cloud. Can you sync them? Oh, so Cloud Syncing my own files is only for premium users. So all this time it's been using the local files, which means actually I'm even more impressed. And it must run smoother if you are on the premium plan and you've uploaded your files. AI voiceover, is that what that says? We've got this beta, beta AI voiceover. Let's see what it does. Okay, yep, it's text to speech. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. It's pretty good. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. Okay, I don't see regular voiceover recording, but I do see this AI voiceover, so I'm gonna use it. Not the cleanest playback in the world. I'm impressed for what it's doing, though, that it's basically, this really is a video editor running in Chrome, because these clips aren't in the cloud. It's just all happening on here. No wonder it's getting fairly warm. Let's try exporting. Same as we video, we can only do 480p. Standard compression quality. The other options are all premium. And so is it using my machine then? If nothing is in the cloud, it must be processing locally? That's concerning to me, but I suppose it's possible. <laughs> so Clipchamp, just like we video, I finished slightly ahead of time. Um, but again, it was missing the freeze frame, freeze frame feature and the uh, audio kind of effect, audio echo that I wanted, but still, Good, I'm impressed by Clipchamp. It's really totally on par with Wii Video. We're going into Shotcut now, Linux video editing app. I don't think I've ever used it before. Hope it's simple enough. So far, so good. It's playing, technically. Let's see what we can do. It's all quite slow and laborious, but hey, working so far, working so far. What are these yellow spaces? I'm gonna have to learn how to use this app. It's the most different one so far. Okay, so this is certainly a more in-depth editor and is gonna be annoying to me just because everything is in a different spot. So say we add a filter, I see we add filters one by one. We can do brightness. We can add some contrast. Oops, what did I do? I think Control Z did something to the timeline. I don't know. Playback sucks. It's so choppy. And I don't know any of the shortcuts or the key bindings here. Split at playhead, S. It's just S. Okay, let's try and move this clip in. How do we do that? Size, position, and rotate. Um, let's try negative. 100. Oh yeah, that works. I'm having to punch in the numbers now. Um, we better save. Can we ripple, delete or whatever? Remove. Perfect. Um, okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Let's chuck in our music. Have I overwhelmed you? It recovered. It recovered. Did it? What happened there? No, don't do that. Phew. Okay, good. Oh, it's really stuttering. I don't know if there's a way to turn down the quality. Bing. Previewing this is basically impossible. It just can't play it back. So I'll just have to eyeball it. This is tedious. The worst way to place the penguin out of all the apps so far. Of course, I could be doing this in the lamest way that there is. I just, I wouldn't know. Look, I had low expectations. I'm impressed by how well this is working actually. And placing this is gonna be tedious again. There's surely an easier way in here. I just don't know what it is. This program is really annoying me, I'm gonna be honest. Just, it's fiddly, you know? Sure, we've got all the kind of normal audio filters that you'd expect a fully featured program to have. Let's just check on some reverb. Beautiful playback. I suppose it's got all the fonts on the system. You can add whatever you like. And I'm going to know some things. I see now properties, filters, playlist. I swear, just every time I want to add a layer, I see that plus button near the timeline. I'm like, surely that does it, but no, it, it's something else. Well, where's my text gone? I made some text. Okay, this is one way to add text, I suppose. Can I write on there? I can. Lower third, thank you. Can I center you? Can't be bothered. We're almost out of time. I haven't added a voiceover at the end. I can't easily see any um, voice recording feature, that, which is fine. 
they don't have to have that. I could record that separately, import it, but I'm out of time. So I'm just gonna try and export. I'm a little worried about exporting. Um, I hope that a little Chromebookie here manages the task. 0%, is it thinking about it? 1%, 2%, running low on available memory. Oh dear, 9%, it's still going. What if I just ignore? Okay, I tried exporting with a few different settings in Shotcut, couldn't get that file out. So bad luck, Shotcut, you've got nothing to show for all that work. Got so close though, edited it, could get up to like 70% on the export, but then mm, no, no, nothing. So now to Caden Live. Last chance for Linux. Can Caden Live pull together an edit on a Chromebook? Again, this is going to be an annoying learning curve, isn't it? It's stuttering about as much as Shotcut was. Really struggling to just play back this footage. So slow. How do we zoom in? There we go. Keys work. Hold down control. How about that? Oh, what have I done? Uh, I closed the whole preview window. My bad. But how do I get it back? There it is. At least I can put it there in a different window. Oh my goodness, how do I rejoin it? Oh dear. Look, okay, I better just put that there. So I've stuffed it and I've made my monitor frame separate window. I don't know how to put it back. Oh no, indeed. Oh well, we keep going, we're running out of time. And can I just drag it? Please, yes. Finally, a little bit of friendliness. Oh, it's not playing back at all. It's stuttering like madness. I mean, this is practically unusable. The fact that I can't play any bits back. It just does this. Useless. I'd say this is the ugliest user interface. Okay, I've done a terrible job here because I can't hardly see what I'm doing. Playback is spotty as hull and I can't easily see a a voiceover or a um, even how to use the text feature. So I'm just going to try export. Do I just click render? I better save first. MP4, the dominating format, as they say. Okay, again, crossing my fingers. Says so it's going to take 16 minutes, which is longer than everything else. So it's going down 14 minutes. Those Android apps could process it. 1080p looks good in a minute. If you have a powerful Chromebook with a fan in. I do wonder how this would go with that. 11 minutes. Well, it says it's finished. It worked! <laughs> I can't believe it worked. There's hope for Crostini after all. Brilliant. I'm chuffed. I have something very important to tell you. I am actually Penguin. And I look like this. Oh no, I have been discovered. Oh no, I'm just a secret European penguin. This is what will happen to you if you let the world know what you really are. I. I have something very important to tell you. I am actually penguin, and I look like this. Oh no, I have been discovered. I know. I'm just a secret European penguin. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. I have something very important to tell you. I am actually penguin and I look like this. Oh no, I have been discovered. I know, I'm just a secret European penguin. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. I... 
I have something very important to tell you. I am actually penguin and I look like this. Oh no, I have been discovered. I know, I'm just a secret European penguin. This is what will happen if you let the world know what you really are. I have something very important to tell you. I am actually penguin and I look like this. Oh no, I have been discovered. I know, I'm just a secret European penguin. So, who are the winners and who are the losers? Well, as you can tell from my little masterpiece there, you can attain a similar quality fast edit from all of these programs. I mean, I forgot to add the jail door sound effect on most of them, and I ran out of time to do the final voiceover on some of them, but clearly you can't go too wrong in giving any of them a try, except for Shotcut, of course, which I couldn't manage to export the video from. Though more on that in a minute. Firstly, the web apps, by only a small margin, were my favorite type of video editor. In Wii Video and ClipChamp, my edits came together faster, more effortlessly, and with fewer crashes than all of the other editors. They had the most logical, user-friendly interfaces and put the least strain on my Chromebook. Unfortunately, these are also the least free-friendly options. Many important features such as cloud storage for smoother editing and HD exports all require you to pay a subscription fee. The monthly prices also seem quite high, though the annual prices seem much more reasonable, especially if you intend to produce quite a few videos or you can share the account with a friend. I'm not sure if that's frowned upon, but I'm sure there's a way. Wii Video did run slightly better on my system here, but ClipChamp might not have been using cloud processing on the free account I was using, so I'm gonna give them a tie. These are both pretty similar web apps for video editing. When it comes down to it, both good options. Not far behind the web apps are the Android apps. KineMaster and CapCut are also fairly similar, and I'm sure PowerDirector matches them both if it's compatible with your device. I did have a bug in KineMaster that prevented me from dragging clips on the timeline, but that's totally forgivable. I haven't experienced that in the past, so I'm sure it's temporary. I really enjoyed using CapCut, but my project did crash about a dozen times. I wasn't able to export a 1080p file and I had to settle for 720p. If you're interested, maybe see how it runs on your device. You might not have any of the same issues. If it runs smoothly, I think I'd give it the edge over KineMaster. The free versions of these apps do also have some limitations like the web apps, but their subscription fees are a bit lower if you do choose to upgrade. Now, the Linux apps were the ones I really wanted to be the best. They're free, open source, and fully featured. Unfortunately, they're also clunky, fairly user unfriendly, at least compared to the web apps and Android apps I used, and pretty darn unreliable on my Chromebook. I found Shotcut and Caden Live to be very similar, but only managed to get an export from Caden Live. Your mileage will vary though, and a lot of the issues I encountered could be related to my four gigabytes of RAM. There's no harm in giving these a go on your machine. It should become clear pretty quickly if they'll run smoothly or not. For me, on the Asus C434, the answer was not. I know, it's frustrating that there's no clear standout here, but for keen Chromebook video editors who don't wanna fuss about too much, I think one of the web apps will serve you well. But if you're on the fence, and maybe you like the idea of editing on your phone as well as your laptop, it doesn't take much commitment to get into one of the Android apps. And finally, if you're happy to tinker around a bit and maybe you've got a fairly beefy Chromebook, perhaps with an i5 processor and eight gigabytes of RAM, there's still a lot of potential in these Linux apps, which will cost you nothing but time to try. Hey, I appreciate you checking this out. I hope it was helpful. Whether it's one of these or something else, I'd love to hear what you do decide to use. Let me know and have a good one.